One man who never leaves the phone because he's always got the sources. He's always plugged in. It's John McMullen. It's football at Ford. At J.F. McMullen giving us a lowdown on the Eagles-Cowboys as we get ready for the big Sunday nighter. And, John, we just found out that it looks like the Cowboys going to be a little health. We thought the Cowboys would be the team that was a little banged up. They might be healthier than the Eagles come fr uh, Sunday night. John, you got me? Yeah, I got you. I, and I was just saying, uh, I'm not sure they're healthier, but they're going to play unhealthy players. So you can tell it's a big game from Dallas's perspective. Uh, and they want to stop this free fall at all costs. Uh, because uh, if this were the New York Jets this week, uh, I do not think, certainly Teron Smith, Lyle Collins, Amari Cooper, those are the three really key guys, but there's other ones as well. I don't think they'd be playing. And that's the word I got from Dallas earlier in the week, and all of a sudden they're going to try to play. So you can kind of tell, taking on a bit of an early season playoff atmosphere from Dallas's perspective. Yeah, there was two offensive linemen there, obviously Cobb and Cooper, two wide receivers in that mix. I mean, this was a team that was going to lose a lot of guys, but also in a concentrated area. We've seen with the Eagles, John, when you lose multiple guys in one area, it really – uh, does damage to the team, but getting those guys back uh, could add to them. So let's get into, now that we got the Dallas uh, injury stuff out of the way, let's get into what we found out today because it sounded like it was a big topic of conversation on uh, these comments that you talked about on our show yesterday that Josina Anderson made regarding the checkdowns and the offense. We had comments the day before uh, or earlier in the day that regarded not making the trade for Ramsey. So did anybody fess up today or did anybody say, take my name out your mouth? Uh, yeah, both receivers essentially said, Nelson Aguilar very adamantly uh, said that's not the way he does business. He's not involved. Alshon Jeffrey uh, also denied, and, and anyone who's ever spoken to Alshon knows he's really soft-spoken, so uh, he doesn't do it in that type of fashion, and kind of hemmed and hawed for a little bit before saying, nah, if he was uh, uh, the person who spoke to Josina. So, I, I can just tell you what I said from from the comments. It just it doesn't seem like an offensive player. It really doesn't. That's not. And as I said, people want to jump to conclusions because of history. Uh, I, I put out today. Point me to one receiver in in the history of football that says check the football down. All receivers want is the football. They want it thrown to them, so they complain about not getting it. Uh, so I, I think people jump to some erroneous conclusions. Um, and, and from Doug's perspective, he kind of laughed it off, and I don't blame him because the comments themselves seemed, uh, I don't know what you want to phrase it, a little bit uneducated, didn't make sense. Uh, so I, I think he just kind of looked at it and and chalked it up to, this team being disappointed at three and three, and there's always some frustration when you lose, uh, and the Eagles are coming off a bad game. So I think he he kind of thinks winning will cure all, all ills, and I think he's right. If they win this football game, I think this will be quickly forgotten. So Doug said today, John, that he did not address the anonymous quotes behind closed doors in the locker room. If I'm a player especially if I'm a good player. Now, this is really a hypothetical, but if I'm a good player in that locker room, I'm standing up with no media around, maybe even no coaches around and saying, yo, who said this? And why are you saying this? Why are you saying it anonymously? This is not what we need right now leading up to the Cowboys week. Or is that just not happening in a 53-man locker room? No, I think it happens. And Lane Johnson kind of said today, the team leaders will uh, address it. But right now it's Friday and they're focused on the Cowboys. They're more focused on the game. Uh, so I do think it will be addressed at some point in-house uh, from a player perspective. I, I said it earlier this week. It's one of the reasons Zach Brown isn't here any longer uh, because he didn't fit in with that locker room. So, uh, if those guys and 
by those guys, I mean the core leaders feel like somebody's not fitting in. They'll address it. And and I think a lot of this has to do with, as I said, winning. If they lose this game, I think it could uh, spin in a very negative direction. If they win it, I think it goes away uh, rather quickly. Um, and, and that's just the nature of the NFL. As far as the Carson Wentz part, I mean – Nobody has made less mistakes. I think one quarterback, if you look at uh, in the NFL, has made fewer mistakes than he has this year. If you look at the advanced metrics, um, it, it, so you sort of and I and I tell this to people last, you know, when the Philly Boys thing came out, I said the same thing. I you guys know from working with people and, and working in an office and anybody who's worked anywhere knows, guess what? Everybody doesn't get along and everybody doesn't like everybody. It doesn't mean you can't work with somebody. So in a lot of ways, I, I think this assumption that everyone has to be kumbaya and love Carson Wentz is kind of silly. Yeah, but if it affects you directly – then it becomes a problem. If you're getting asked about something that someone else said or, you know, if you're putting someone else's name in your mouth when you don't have to, then, then in my opinion, it's a problem. I agree with you. You, you work with people. You, you have a professional relationship with someone. You don't have to become, you know, best friends for life. But there's still do's and don'ts in a workplace, right? Well, no question. And, and Doug admitted today, no, he did not like that there was an ano anonymous source doing this. So it, it by no means am I trying to say that it, it's not an issue. It is an issue. It shouldn't have been said. It it, in, it, it should have been handled in a, in a different way. Uh, but again, if you if you look at the actual quote, it's so dumb. I, I don't think anyone's taking it seriously. It, it's and that's why I said from day one, it's not a receiver because receivers don't talk about checking the football down. That's not what they want. They want the football in their hands. And uh, as far as the offense uh, being simpler, I asked Doug about that today. To me, it comes off as a defensive player who doesn't understand what the heck they're doing on the offensive side of the ball. And there's a defensive player, by the way, uh, that left the building this week. So, if you want to read those tea leaves, feel free. <laughs> That's interesting. interesting. Uh, we were I was listening to Mays and Aton on my drive down here and found through Josh that uh, Josina Anderson is a UNC grad, the same college that one Zach Brown attended. Miss Lippy <laughs> likes to drink soda. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to, you know, connect dots. That's all. I don't know. Well, and everybody's trying to connect dots, and that's well because everybody placed her. Everybody placed her in Chicago because she covered the Bears for ESPN. She, you know, in the North for a while. So you have uh, poor and Jordan she's Howard. Very close. She is. Yeah, she's very close with Alshon Jeffrey, and she's uh, used him as a source before. Uh, and that's the natural uh, direction everyone goes. Anytime Joe Cena drops one of these grenades, as I put about the Eagles, everybody looks at all Sean Jeffrey. It wasn't all Sean Jeffrey. Uh, and when I say that, I, I don't know that I don't have that kind of relationship with all Sean Jeffrey, but I do know, uh, he wants the football and he doesn't want to check things down. It's not something he would say. Well, it doesn't make uh, sense for him. He caught 12 balls last week because essentially in the check down mode. We would love to see Elshon catch the ball further down the field. He averaged seven yards a catch last week. Yeah, uh, well, they, they thought they had something on that bubble screen. And, and by the way, he's been very successful with that, and especially in short yardage and goal line situations. I think people forget. And he was successful with it. Uh, against the Vikings right up until he wasn't, and that's when the Vikings kind of figured it out because they ran it too much. So I think that has more to do with Doug uh, going to the well uh, a little bit too often. But it wasn't him. It wasn't Nelson Aguilar. And uh, like I said, there's a defensive player who's left the building, and <laughs> if you want to put two and two together, feel free. All right, uh, at J.F. McMullen, John McMullen with us here. So um, if, if that's the case and, uh, you know, okay, you look at this moving forward here, 
did it seem that that was kind of in the locker room overtaking everything? Like, guys are just like, guys, I just want to talk about the game, or was this a noticeable distraction today? Uh, it was a distraction today, but everybody knew it was coming. I mean, it, it was very professional. It wasn't one of those things where uh, it was a situation where everybody got surly. I think Doug handled it more with a comedic flair than anything else. And uh, Lane Johnson talked about it. Zach Ertz talked about it. All Sean, uh, in his way, talked about it. Nelson Aguilar, as I said, was very emphatic. So they all knew it was coming. And they were all prepared. Uh, and there's guys. I mean, like Lane Johnson and, and Zach Ertz are, are just pros. I, I mean, they answer every question every week, good, bad, ugly. There's certain guys that do that. There's certain guys that don't. Uh, but those guys and leaders of the team, Malcolm Jenkins is in that category as well. They answer everything. They answer everything you ask. And... They're used to this kind of stuff. John, so on the flip side of the locker rooms, you know, all week we were talking about the Doug Peterson guarantee in air quotes and nothing really came of it. But now today I saw that the Cowboys defensive end, Demarcus Lawrence, uh, said this regarding Doug's promise of a victory. And I quote, he's got to come here. Tell him, come on, come on. We ready. Can he play the game? He might want to shut his butt up and stay on the sideline. He can't play the game for those guys. Yeah, I mean, well, this is what <laughs> Zach Brown got in trouble for. And I do think it was a little ironic that they cut him this week uh, and Doug goes and does the same thing. You knew it was going to uh, – the Cowboys were going to use it. Uh, I mean, and Doug should have known better. Uh, if that's his – maybe he doesn't care. I mean, uh, maybe he is trying to get his uh, locker room fired up. I do think as a whole, I mean, that kind of stuff is a little bit overrated by fans and even certain media members. Uh, I mean, if you need, and Zach Ertz said this today, if you need extra uh, motivation to get up for a division game for first place, you, you need to be in another line of work. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's no added motivation. There shouldn't be any needed motivation. Uh, but, I, I mean, you try to use everything you can, so I'm sure the Cowboys are going to try to use it. Maybe it fires them up for a couple minutes early in the game, but then, then things settle down, and it's about execution and who plays better on that particular day. All right, so let's get into some uh, meat of this game. Jason Peters, do you expect to see him Sunday? And if not, uh, how does that match up? Uh, how do you feel about that potential matchup with Dillard replacing him? Uh, no, Jason's out. Uh, Nigel Bradham's out. Sean Jackson is out. So, And, and that's as expected. Um, those guys just weren't going to be able to go. So Andre Dillard's going to get his first NFL start. Uh, the positive to that. Had a very difficult time against very two uh, two very good players uh, against the Vikings and Everson Griffin and Danell Hunter. Uh, now there's two very difficult players in Dallas too on the edge, Demarcus Lawrence, uh, who who will mainly be on Lane Johnson's side, but Robert Quinn is also a, a very good edge rusher as well. Uh, and I imagine they'll try to take advantage to put Lawrence uh, on the other side on occasion as well. So it's it's very difficult, but the difference is he's preparing. He's gotten all the first-team reps. He knew he was starting this week. And I do think that's a significant difference. So I think it'll be a little bit better, but it's going to be difficult for him. It's it's tough. It's a tough two weeks as far as edge players go. And probably a bad time for Jason Peters to get hurt again, but it is what it is. And you drafted a first-round guy got to get in there and he's got to perform john uh jackson bradham darby all out it looks like this week uh let's look at the bradham injury more so because it seems that that one is where they have the biggest drop off yeah well real quick darby's questionable so he still may play i think that's going to be a game day decision uh, and they'll see how his hamstring is and how he responds uh but he's limited he's been limited all week 
Uh, Jalen Mills is is at corner, uh, isn't on the roster yet, but he'll be activated uh, by Friday or Saturday. He he expects to start, so he's not only going to play, he's going to start. Uh, but Nigel, yeah, I I mean that that ankle was pretty clear early in the week. He wasn't going to be able to go, so. That's a concern because this team is based, the offense is, is based on the running game, and it's going to be better if Smith and uh, 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 Collins are out there, and it looks like they're going to be able to play. So uh, Ezekiel Elliott's tough, and I don't know if you want Nate Gary and Camus Grugere Hill as two undersized linebackers. This is probably not the week you want them in there. Uh, and T.J. Edwards might have a big role in this game. Undrafted rookie, more of a natural linebacker, 240 pounds. And he's the guy who essentially is going to replace Zach Brown as that run stuffer. And just like Andre Dillard, another rookie thrown into the deep end of the pool. Yeah, John, and then also um, you, you mentioned Darby, questionable, and Mills. Uh, is, is Mills, do you think, a definitive play now on Sunday? Yeah, he's definitive. Uh, he is going to play, and he said today in the locker room he's going to start. So I, I think the bigger issue with him is how much does he play uh, because he hasn't played in the calendar year, uh, and I'm not sure he can play every single down as it, as he typically did when he was a starter before. So Doug talked about a rotational system. And I don't know what that rotation is going to be, if it's going to be three or four. If Darby plays, I think Darby's going to start uh, on the opposite side of Mills, and I think Rasul Douglas is going to fill out the third uh, person in that rotation, and Sidney Jones probably doesn't play, to be honest, or play that much. And if Darby can't go, I think Rasul starts, and then you have to get Sidney involved in, in that rotation. And Skandrick will play the nickel uh, because Sabante Maddox is still not ready to go. John, if you're Jim Schwartz and the, the Philadelphia Eagles on the defensive side of the ball, what's your, what's your game plan? I mean, we ran through Zeke's numbers against the Eagles. He's 4-0. He's averaging – 116 yards on the ground against the Eagles in his career, over 50 yards catching the ball in his career against the Eagles. And we all know what Amari Cooper did against this team last year with essentially 5,000 yards and 5,000 touchdowns in one game. So do you let Cooper have his and try and do a bend but don't break? Do you try and take Zeke out or do you let Zeke have his? Uh, like, how do you prepare? Well, I think you cross your fingers and, and you kind of hope, and you do probably know that oh, boy. even if Mark Cooper plays, he's not going to be healthy. He's not going to be 100%. So I don't think you're going to see uh, the normal Amari Cooper. I, I don't know. If you look at Minnesota, I think they went too really hard. I mean, they really wanted to stop that running game. They really sold out to stop that running game. In theory, you have a more proven running game in Dallas uh, with uh, a guy who's been doing it now for a long time in Ezekiel Elliott. I, I don't know if they can sell out to that degree and expect this secondary to hold up. I think we saw it, uh, and I think we continue to see it. Now, maybe things change with Mills and Darby, especially if Darby's able to play. Um, so maybe it's a little bit easier, and maybe you do have to help uh, Nate Gary, for instance, or Camu. Uh, so on paper, it's a difficult matchup for that defense because they don't have a ton of talent on the back end, and I think people are starting to realize that, and you got to be honest about it. Well, I think the Eagles might be hoping that these two guys change the perception of their back end, don't you? Yeah, well, I, I think they're <laughs> uh, they're hoping and 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 I, I think they feel it's going to be better, and I agree with them uh, because these are veteran players. Uh, they they've proven themselves. Um, not to say they're perfect. I know fans are going to jump all over that, but I think their the last eighteen games they've started together. Uh, they're thirteen and five. The Eagles as a whole with those two yep. corners. 
So they've proven they can do it. Uh, they've proven they can win with that group. Um, it's not going to be great, but it's going to be better. And that's, you know, that's the goal. you got to get better. Uh, and it might not be as good as you want it to be, but it's going to be better than having Rasul and, and Sidney, Sidney Jones out there. All right, John McMullen, the uh, Eagles Cowboys Sunday night, the countdown to kickoff show. John McMullen, of course, Tollman Joe's with Tony Bruno, Colin Thompson. You guys will be breaking it all down from every angle on Sunday, and uh, that's a five o'clock countdown to kickoff start. But right now, John, how are you feeling? We now know the Cowboys are going to be a little healthier than we thought. The Eagles, a little healthier than we thought for them too. Darby and Mills looking like they're back. Uh, they won't have Jackson and Peters, but how do you see Sunday Night Football going? A very important game between two, three, and three outfits. Uh, well, I go back to Doug Peterson early in this week, and we just talked about him guaranteeing, put that in air quotes, uh, a win. This is a Doug Peterson spot. Everybody thinks the Eagles are done. They're struggling. The locker room is fractured. And nobody expects anything. They're going on the road again. They're going to win this football game 26-21. to 26-21 Philadelphia over Dallas. And uh, we will, of course, be breaking it down on Monday. You'll hear more from John, of course, on the Countdown to Kickoff show with Tony Bruno, Colin Thompson, live from Tom Joe's this Sunday. Countdown to Kickoff starts at 5. Merrill and Mike call the action 8-20 on 97.3 ESPN. All right, John, thanks so much, pal. All right, thank you, guys.